Well, before the rain kicks in, I'm gonna run around behind the barn and see if my donor truck motor for the Merc is gonna uh, start. I don't know if the battery's any good in it. If it is, hopefully I can drive it through all this mud and uh, I can get the motor and trans out of that thing before the rain comes. All right, well, here we are. And I believe this is the two wheel drive unit that I want to use. Looks like I can get it out. Let's see if I gotta go get a battery. Not looking good, not dinging or making any noise. Oh no, it's dead. All right, yeah, let's drag a battery out here. I guess the kid's already got his cats off in here, eh? <laughs> We also got flat tires in the back, but that's not relevant because they're not very good. First I thought they were good, but they're not. Flat tires and all. And mud. It's not a help to drive in the mud, that's for sure. You got good grippers then, flat tires. <laughs> nice and wet good job all right well I think I've sourced a bunch of parts for this locally on top of that so that is like a huge bonus because uh, he's got my suspension some of the brake parts I'm missing uh, yeah like super win I got to make a bigger list but I gotta go see him on the weekend and hopefully uh, I can pick up all the parts so I can get the brakes all together on this thing that would be awesome see what <clears throat> lovely stuff we're working with I tried boosting it the other battery was too dead and it wasn't working so I had to switch batteries but it looks like usually it's written on something somewhere around here well what the hey the tag is gone let's say it's a oh is it up here nope refrigerant belts Okie doke. Never mind. I don't know what it is. When I get in the computer, it'll tell me. But I'm really leaning that it's probably a 4.8 <clears throat> with a 60E. So, a whole lot of wins. Uh, yeah. I The way I'm going to take this off is I'm just going to lift the body off. That's really, to me, is the fastest. Then it's easy to get the motor. Otherwise, it's just things just don't jive up in the front. Then you got to take the front end off or do all kinds of weird stuff. To me, usually if the bolts come out anyways, it's easier because then it's like the six bolts, the steering, just cut the brake lines. I'll pull that off, the shift cable off, and uh, cut a couple hoses and a few little wires, and we're good to go. So, I don't know, Let's see what happens here.
why these shift cables have to be so long. <laughs> this goes down and then does a big loop around underneath the truck yet. It's banana. So we got that loose. I'm gonna grab the, uh, the gas pedal yet. And uh, I think now I just gotta undo all the body mounts and then, don't get me wrong, you can run it through the front of the truck and take it out like a normal motor, but for me it's easier because the exhaust manifolds get in the way, amongst other things. And uh, this one does have broken studs already. Hmm. I don't know if it's faster. I don't think it's any faster to take it out the front. I don't know. We'll keep playing with it. If the body mounts come out super quick, I'm still going to lift the cab off. Just make my life easier. At least I feel that is. Because I have the equipment to do it, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> I think I successfully succeeded at failing to record anything that happened here with this, but whatever, it's pretty straightforward. I looped the chain through, lifted it up, came back. I mean, I have the power of that thing, so it makes life easier. That's why this is not so terrible to do in my eyes. Um, all right, so we're in here. I'm gonna have to make a cross member, so that's not relevant at all. And uh, <clears throat> I might wanna use some of this crossover pipe. So I'm gonna cut this pipe off. I'm not using the rear O2s, but I'll just keep them as spares because they're the same front to back most of the time. I'll keep some of this pipe. Uh, yeah, hopefully I can run this. Eh, I don't know if I can. I'll keep it anyways, I'll throw it in the muffler van. But I'm gonna pull these mounts off. Uh, I'm just gonna unbolt them on the front here. I'm gonna pull that cross member, the, the bolt out of the middle there and this is a two piece, so I'm not using it. So I'm just gonna bob that shaft off. Just cut it off, Sh junk. And uh, we're gonna go from there. Well, then I'm gonna use the tractor, pull this out, put it in the shop, so at least it's here. Might do a quick mock-up, see how it fits. And uh, then I can dispose of the rest of this truck here. Oh no, I'm gonna need possibly the fuel pump and stuff like that. So I might have to pull the box yet. Or I'll just drop the tank. I think I'll drop the tank. I want to keep all the fittings so I can reuse all that stuff. Yep, yep. A la budget build.
right. Well, that was pretty straightforward. I think that was all together. I don't know, like a little over two hours maybe to do. Uh, so <clears throat> did this differently. I grabbed all the fuel line. Don't know if I said that, but and uh, I'm gonna basically try to. It should be pretty close to where the tank has got to go. So this, I don't know, whatever. Save a few bucks, I guess, or whatever. But I can use the, uh, now I can use the push connects just to finish up to the tank. Like I say, I still gotta drop the fuel tank and grab out of there. I was grabbing here, I grabbed the motor mounts because they got those funky plates. So I always like the passenger side ones. You can see the difference. Eh? See how small they are? If you have to use them to modify them to work on something, they're a lot nicer to use than this thing. This is ugly. You gotta cut so much of it away. And it's like got this reinforcement and stuff, whereas this one doesn't. But whatever. But I always want to take them out because they got the long bolts which we use to hold the forks on the tractor always. So I did that and then I was always wondering where we got these nuts from, but it turns out this brace has the right pitch of thread for those. So so I grabbed that. <clears throat> I just gotta go grab this computer mount yet. And then uh, I think we're good. I think I'm gonna take the cab and just set it back onto here. But uh, then I can go throw it out back when it dries down. Or dries out. I might lift it up and drop this fuel tank yet. Just so I can uh, grab the sending unit and stuff out of it. And the fuel pump. Whatever I do on that one, I'm, I can't source a tank. Rock Auto doesn't have a lot of parts. So I might have to modify a different fuel tank to work in it. Which is fine. I might try... Uh, like an old Ford van tanks, the fuel injected years. So maybe take the spare tire out. I can probably put that in there and then I can just it, the pick up everything on there's already for a fuel injection. So I can just probably scab this fuel pump onto it and then a the guy should be good. All right, well, let's get this thing out. And uh, then I guess we'll come back and maybe just try to do a quick slide and see how this thing fits. Should fit good, but I would think it does. But what do I know?
All right, what do we got here? This fits pretty good. Motor's got to go back some more because it's on the full lock with the steering. She'll hit the oil pan. So I guess if I have to notch the pan, but I don't think I need to. I think we're good. And it doesn't hang very low under the cross member, so... And I'm not dropping the car anyways. You can see I got some room to go. I think I got enough to make clearance. Uh, motor mounts will be a little interesting. I might have to scoot them ahead and then I can kind of reuse those things. I have it just sitting on the way he did before. Just mocked up in there. It does have to lift up in the back yet. But I think this manifold will fit on. I should just try it for the heck of it. I'll bolt it in and then we'll see. As I think the motor's got to come my way a bit, but if, if, if we have to, I'll put it in a little bit crooked. Uh, I'm not sure how the front original rad worked, because I do have it. But I think it sat here and was flush, which is going to be a win, because then that means uh, I can use the stock fan. So, let's lift her up, have a look underneath, see uh, how successful we are here. Well, I see why we can't go back more. <laughs> we have to build a new cross member. Doesn't matter because the mount's back here anyways. So, no problemo. And this yoke actually looks like it fits through here, so that's kind of cool. We won't have to modify anything in there. Nice. Uh, like I say, we are close. See how it hits. But we got still up on the firewall. I don't know if you can see. But from the head to firewall relation, it's about an inch and a half, two inches-ish. So we should be okay. This side, the motor mount shouldn't be a problem. Because it's, uh, it's a decent relation to there. This side on the other hand, well, actually it's still kind of the same. It's a little off, but... I think I can work with it. I won't be able to use the original mounts. I'll have to make something else to fit on top of there, but not bad, not bad. I tried fitting the exhaust manifold, but it actually hit the master cylinder. It was uh, tight against there. So I might try some, look for a set of headers or something. Not that I'm a, I'm not a headers fan, but unless I cut the manifold and twist it in, yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna pull this off. This thing looks like a heck of a lot like the one I just put on the Jeep. I wonder. I have a rebuild for it though, but I wonder if this other dude has parts. I'm just going to put new stuff on if he's got. That would make life easier. So we got there, there. This transmission can't really go up. If anything, well, that's just that. That's probably as low as I can go with the transmission. So I might have to come down a little bit with the motor. But that's not bad. I think the motor's sitting a little high up in the front. But we got room, because we're sitting on this block here. So we got room, we can come back, we got room to go back. We just gotta work on the exhaust. Figure out Z brakes. Maybe we'll start working on those. See if I need new ones, it's not till the weekend. I can get out there, so. And then uh, we'll start on the body. So, we're under here. I've kind of murdered the fuel lines right now. But if we loosely hang these up, if I can funnel this stuff through, this is going to work pretty nice. Because that'll probably put the stock fuel system here somewhere. To which I just got to finish it out to a fuel tank of some kind. To which I should start looking at the order and things. The rest of the car is actually pretty nice. Other than, you know, the inner and outer rocker bits. Well, you know, some minor floor stuff. <laughs> we can deal with that. We're going to have to deal with that. Alright. So I think I've seen what these look like. So I don't know. I don't know if I run this diff or not. I'm kind of on the fence. I'm gonna see if I have a big bolt pattern diff somewhere. To me, it might be just easier to put a little bit newer in here. Not that this hurts anything, but. 
Unless Norm has a wheel bearing. And maybe I will. Just do it and be done. Oh. I guess both of these sound kind of crunchy. We'll deal with whatever we got to deal with here. All right.
Okay, well, it's been honed. It's not terrible inside, but the, like I don't feel anything even though it's really hard to see on camera. Yeah, it's too hard to see. But she looks good. I can't feel it. There looks like there's some pitting in there, but I don't know. I got the top part all clean. I might try to bench bleed it and just see what it does, if it starts to seep or not, but I think it should be okay. I'm going to uh, grab that master cylinder, that rebuild. I think that's this one. Yeah. And I'm super guessing it's for this car. <laughs> Might have gone through all the effort for nothing, but uh, anyways, I'm going to throw this in there and uh, we'll see if she works. So, made a humongous mess. I uh, kind of had the bench bleed it on the car because I don't, I didn't have the big block in the front. I didn't take it all apart. So I did that. Now I got to go put this line back on. Um, I'm actually just going to bleed the front brakes for now. Uh, until I know what I'm doing with the back, I'm just going to pinch that brake line because I got to replace it anyways. So I'm going to pinch that line, bleed my fronts, Completely backwards the way you should do, but on a single pot system, I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, maybe it does. Who knows? All I know is I'm going to get some fluid out of that. I'm going to crack that line, get the fluid out back there. Uh, yeah, it's kind of irrelevant at this point, but yeah. We'll bleed what we can for now. Make our life a little easier later. Okay, and then what do we do? Don't really care about the motor right now. I just have it and it fits. I think the next thing is to start looking at some rust. I think we'll roll it out and come up with a game plan here, what I all got to do. Because I think I'm the hoop till, till the weekend, till I can pick up some parts. So let's see what we can do. Okay, well, we have front brakes and a nice big mess. Uh, I basically pulled the plunger out of here 
I'm gonna top this up. I want to see if this weeps out of here if for some reason I'm thinking I'm thinking it's not good or something. I don't know. I mean my back line's not bled or anything. I kind of cracked it just to let some fluid out. I just pinched it because I still don't know what's happening with the back end here. I'm trying to source out what the heck this thing is. And uh, some wheel bearings. But I'm thinking it might be easier for me to just... I'm pretty sure... Unless this is like the non-modern style where it's a floater. I might pull these bolts out for the heck of it. And if the axles come out, then it'd be pretty easy to do the axle, uh, the bearings on it. But And if not, then... Uh, I'll uh, just do my thing. I'll swap out the axle, I guess. I thought about it. I could probably put something in that's a little more narrow, but uh, I can do wheel adapters so I can run my big bolt. I don't want to carry multiple spare tires with me. All right, well, I guess uh, let's drop her down and evaluate uh, what I got to fix here. Sure cutting they're close on the one side. <laughs> I still don't think I can open this door enough on this side though. I can't have the car ahead enough that so much suck. I might have to work with this one on the ground. Not terrible. She's got her fair share of some spots there. Oh somebody foamed her up. Here we got some, comes up here into this floor section. The tow boards are good. Here's not bad. I know it's gonna be bad when we take these off. And it looks like I'm gonna have to take the car off the hoist, like it's just not gonna happen. I really didn't wanna work on the ground. I was hoping 
it would shuffle enough over that I could uh, get my door open more. Kind of crappy. I think game plan is to pull these off and then we'll see what we're working with. These and then the inners. So I guess I'll lift it up, take the screws out of here first. Then I guess I have to drop it, roll it ahead so I can see what's going on inside the rockers there. But we'll start on this side and then we'll look at the other side after. Well, I'm surprised it's actually not worse than it is. It's gonna have to get cut off. It's got a weird double inside, and I don't know what that's about. Like it's got a weird double panel in there. So I might not worry about the one panel and I'm just gonna focus this one and butt to the outside panel. I think that's just all I'm gonna do. The inner one I'll just trim back. It doesn't seem to be necessary. I don't know why. That seems weird, eh? There's, it's like it was a double walled channel inside of there. And then we gotta do some floors. So I don't know, I'm gonna do the rockers first. I mean, these would be way easier if I took the doors off, but there's no way I'm gonna get those doors back in the same place that uh, the open and close as nice as they do. <laughs> I should see for the heck of it though. I doubt it. I guess if they turn, I'll pull them out. I'll just drill a hole through them so they stay in the same place. But my luck in these hinges never seem to work out, so. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how much more I'm gonna get today. I had a, it's kind of a long day. Kinda of had the day off from work, so I got my motor out. Interior cleaned out. My motor in the car, I basically got it mocked up. Uh, we got our front brakes all done. We got our master cylinder rebuilt. So yeah, I'd say we did pretty good today. I have to still source around for some stuff because it's kind of bananas. We law, I guess he had sold the hinges off the car for some reason, so I don't have hood hinges. And I could steal them off my other car. I really don't want to do that, but I do have them if I have to. But that car doesn't have rear trunk hinges either, so I'm a little hooped there. And they're specific to these Mercs. And I did find a pair on eBay, but they were like $600. I'm like, dang, that's not going to happen. So I might be making some kind of a hood hinge or a trunk hinge yet. Don't know. But uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave this one. I'll. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.